Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I was thinking about going to the beach today and the Lord put on my heart and said, you know what, let's do a couple of videos today and get them out for the brethren. So today we're going to talk about a testimony, okay, to remind the brethren that people are still getting saved out there. The Word of God is still, is still abundant in the world, okay, I mean in the sense that the, world, the majority of the world hates the Word of God, but I'm saying the Word of God hasn't been shut out completely. There's still people out there getting saved. And I want to read this uh, testimony that was emailed me by a brother in Christ. Okay. Starts out saying, Hello, Philip. My name is the brother in Christ. I'm 23 years old and I live in uh, Ottawa, Canada. I wanted to write my testimony to you because I feel the need to share it with someone. Amen. When you get saved and you've gone through a very tough life before you got saved and God saved you and God changed your life you just want to tell somebody and a good someone like a brother or sister in Christ somebody that will appreciate the um, the changed life your testimony getting saved when you try to preach to the lost world hey God saved me you get the deer in the headlights look you get the the the, the hate which he'll talk about in here right but sometimes it's good to tell there's a big gray squirrel over there. It's good to tell a brother in Christ. Share it with somebody. I've never told anyone save my sister my life story and the Lord has been convicting me of that lately. I want to feel closer to the brethren and I feel this is the best way to do it. Fellowship. Testimonies. Brothers Jesus Christ, I used to get emails from the brethren that had testimonies, whether it was your salvation testimony or testimonies on things that God has present tense done in your life. I got used to get emails on prayer requests, and all that seems to just come to a halt. This is the first testimony that was emailed me in a, in a long time. That's what that email is there for, primarily, and it's also there for fellowship. Okay. I'll link the, uh, the email uh, for the ministry, the email, in the comment section. But telling testimonies between brethren, fellowship between brethren, saying, Oh, look what God showed me today. This is what God did in His Word. This is what God did for me. That's a great way. I was born in Montreal and lived there my whole life. My father worked as a fur processor and made good wealth for himself in the process. So I grew up... Give me a second. I'm just going to take the clipboard off. So I grew up with too many money issues. I'm sorry, I grew up with too many money issues. He worked 12 hours a day at the time and took us to the Catholic Church almost every weekend. So I grew up hearing a lot of false doctrine that really turned me away from religion as a whole. Therefore I started to hate religion and its control tactics. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that's the biggest thing we're fighting out there it seems today in these last days. Everyone I've ever talked to has heard of a Jesus Christ. They've heard of a Jesus Christ, but the Jesus Christ they've heard of is the Antichrist. He's fake. He's false. A lot of the people around here that are atheists used to be part of this religion. They used to be either a Catholic. They used to either be a... Um, I have a guy up the hill that used to be... A, his family raised him as Catholic, and now he hates all Christianity. I have another neighbor over here that used to be part of the, his raised in the Jehovah's Witness, and now he's an atheist. Wants nothing to do with Jesus Christ or religion. Okay, the number one way that Satan is destroying people's faith in the real Jesus Christ is a counterfeit Jesus Christ. All these false religions that are out there. I understand what he's saying. This brother's saying. On top of that, my mother would try to control every aspect of my life, and I started to resent her for that at a young age. She would control everything we saw, ate, and who we'd see. Okay. Now don't get me wrong, to a point, that's what a, that's what a mother's supposed to do. Okay, and the father. They're supposed to raise you in the admonition of the Lord. They tell you the do's and they tell you the don'ts. But some people can take it a little too far. You weren't even allowed to go outside to play. That's when you can take it too far. We weren't even allowed to go outside to play in case we were kidnapped. Her words, not mine. Or go to new friends' houses. So I'd be very cautious, even as a parent, when it comes to friends um, having a child. I wouldn't let them just run over and play with any any friends. You know, 
maybe other Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women's children that they come together and play a little bit. But you got to understand that you got to be careful. I had a lot of friends that really pulled me away from proper authority, got me into a lot of mess, got me in a lot of bad things. And if I had somebody that would, was there, I didn't have a father growing up. If I had a father growing up that said, hey, you need to stay away from those guys. Those aren't friends. They're just going to mess you up and get you in trouble. I wish I had someone like that. Friend's house or even our relative's house alone. See, that's the where it goes overboard. Even relative's house alone. As I grew up, I started to realize it was because she didn't want us hearing what other people might say about her parenting. Eventually, when I was 10 or so, I realized that she became aggressive when she drank, and so did my father. They would hit me for playing too loud or trying to get their attention since I was five. I mean, children at that age, they, they want attention from their parents. But it took till 10 to realize it was the drinking making them violent. On top of that, my father never established himself as a spiritual head, making things so much worse with my mother, and her abuse got worse. Feminism. Father's not the head of the house. He's not the spiritual head covering and the physical head covering. He's just there. She's the head covering. Spiritual, physical, er feminism. Okay. And then what happens if everything goes downhill from there? You just look at America. I'll give you a little background information on my parents. My father was born in Sl Slavia, Slavi let's see if I can say it, Slovenia on a farm. He grew up working very hard but being abused by his father for not being the way he wanted. Proverbs 17, 21. He that begetteth a fool doth it to his sorrow and the father of a fool hath no joy. His mother was kind, but through her kindness never allowed my father to experience the true world, and he became very afraid of the world. They moved to Montreal when my father was 10, back in 1971, and my father started working for the company he now owns. He stayed with his parents till the age of 36 when he met my mother. My mother's background is a little bit more hectic. Her father was born in France and had to leave with his parents in 1940 due to occupation and they fled the Congo, fled to Congo. There he enlisted in the army and met my grandmother and after he was wounded he resigned and moved with my grandmother to Montreal where they had my mother, uncle and aunt. They all grew up with money because my grandfather came from a family of jewelers, so they never really had to strive for much. My mother married a 40-year-old man when she was 19, and her father died and stayed with him for two years. She then went from man to man along with her sister until she met my father when she was 33. Her family has a history of alcoholism and substance abuse, and I never really noticed until I was 10, like I said previously, after I noticed she changed after her first glass, I started to distance myself from her, but it was hard as she was so controlling and my father didn't do anything to stop her. That's what, I, I just don't know how to say it, that I'm, that's just sad. Okay, you, children want attention, but imagine a child that avoids their mom or their dad, in this case mom or their dad. A child's supposed to want to be around their parents. I want to be like my dad. Like a son should say, I want to be like my dad when I grow up. The daughter should be like, I want to be like my mom when she grows up. When she grows up. But when you got a child that's like at 10 years old, you're living in a, in a tough situation. I really hated being at home and I started to run away a lot when I was 15. I dropped out of high school at 16 and started to hang out with delinquents for money purposes. But this led me to doing more bad things that weighed heavy on my conscience and the situation at home kept getting worse as my mother's drinking got worse and worse. So there weren't many options for me. I started staying at friends places more and more even though him and his area were extremely dangerous because I felt more relation to those people than the rich kids at my private school but I hated a lot of what they did and said. Remember God's laws are written on every man's heart. Before you're saved, you can still have conviction about things that are evil and wicked out there. Eventually, the Lord had enough and put me in a situation where I had to, a loaded gun put in my chest. 
and that was enough to scare me out of that lifestyle. So I came back home in 2016 and had a changed life that was very dramatic. I started to clean up my diet, grow and learn how to grow food. I cut back on my drinking, but I started to heavily indulge in cannabis. When I started to fix up my parents' house and try to help them clean up their diet, my mother did not like that and started to attack me any chance she could. And my cannabis addiction gave my mother a lot of ammunition to attack me with, so much that she made my life hell. And through that misery, I lashed out and broke my door to my room. When she heard me do that, she called the police on me and false witness to them that I hit her. Thank the Lord that the police officer was smart enough to see she was drunk and clearly out to get me. So he handed me a card for family therapy. Okay. Would have been a better thing for that cop to do if he was saved was to hand a gospel track. But no, here's family therapy. This made things worse and I came into the gar garage one day to find her on the phone with the therapist telling him I was insane and not to be and not to believe my lies. So I canceled the therapy session and decided to take myself out of the equation and go to college in Ottawa. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I came here and studied to be a chef but left due to unwanted pregnancy with the girl I was with. Mind you, I'm still very lost by this point and I find that through teaching myself to do real things with my hands that I lost that a lot of the other guys at school acted like children and mocked me for eating organic and not wanting to play video games all day. I still adored video games though, trust me, but I played more strategy based and intellect games, not Call of Duty. My response is always going to be, games are games. They're addictive, designed to be addictive, they mess with your head, and they pull you away from the Lord. I speak from experience. But I understand there's some people I knew that didn't partly play games at all or didn't play games at all. But I want to point out real quick, this is a great test by showing how he tried to clean up his life without Jesus Christ. And then he still had other problems. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do it without Jesus Christ. So the pregnancy, the mocking, and the fact I learned more about cooking on my own than from these chefs was enough to make me learn leave college and get an apartment in Ottawa. I started to feel very depressed because I had fallen for a strange woman that made me miserable and was now carrying what I thought was my child. When he said it like that, it kind of lets you know what, what he's going to get to in the future, but we're going to get there. She smoked cigarettes, weed, took cocaine, MDMA, I have no clue what that is, so I'll have to look it up, MDMA, I meant to, but I haven't yet, Xanax, I know what that is, and mushrooms after she became pregnant. Now I'm a very vocal man, but I could couldn't physically force her to stop. In these last days with feminism running rapid, the man has no authority in his own home. I've been there with the wife that's just out of control. I became a hard drinker because I felt like a failure as a father and had a hard time functioning and doing simple things because I was so miserable. This led me to finally giving up and kicking her out still pregnant and she immediately went and started dating a 32 year old banker. In other words, she had guys on the side. That's what I'm getting. She had friends. I, I've been there too, where my ex-wife was talking to men while she was with me. All right. this, this killed me inside. I couldn't sleep. I kept drinking and crying every night because I couldn't bear the thought of another man raising my child with this evil woman. It was so bad she sent me a picture of the child born and never even called to, to me to see his birth. As he grew up, I felt an urge to get a paternity test. Something was strongly convicting me to do so and it came back negative. In other words, it wasn't his child. I cried with relief and picked myself up and continued on my career path. This woman took such a toll on my life, I swore off relationships. She acted as a lot like my mother and I realized these types of women were pits with thorns on the walls and I started to notice that all women were acting this way and that the government wouldn't do anything for me child-wise. During the pregnancy I contacted a lawyer to try and get sole custody. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. I want to stop there for a second. I got to make a point for all the sisters in Christ out there that are mothers. 
if you have a son, if you have a son, when he goes out in the world and he looks for a good woman, he's going to compare that good woman to you. That's just the way things are. That's why you are supposed to be a good, Bible-believing, God-fearing woman, sisters in Christ. You're supposed to be a good keeper at home. You're to love your husband. You're to obey your husband. You're to set the example for how a woman's supposed to be so when that son goes out, that's the type of woman he looks for. And I've heard this in testimonies a lot where the women that men tend to go after is who their mother used to be like. Okay? And it goes and it works the other way too. When If you have a daughter, men out there, Bible-believing, God-fearing men out there, when you have a daughter, when she starts looking at men that are coming around to court her, the type of man that she's going to be looking at mostly is the type of man that you are. Are you a Bible-believing, God-fearing man? Are you living according to the Bible, providing for your family, God, um, loving your wife as Christ loved the church? Making sure your home is a Bible-believing, God-fearing home. Staying from all appearance of evil home. Okay. That's the type of man she's going to look for. So I worked for a few months. My lease ended and I came back home to Montreal. I happened to come back at Christmas and I saw that my mother was not happy for me, but rather she continued attacking me and mocking me for being with that woman. On, And on top of that, she neutered my dog behind my back because she knew I was against such evil things. And my father, on the other hand, drank so much that he had to quit because his blood was not circulating properly and it was threatening his life. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but I don't think the father never gets saved. God will do something in your life to wake you up and open your eyes. I had a, my brother... I'm talk, not talking about a brother in Christ, I'm talking about my brother, son of my mother, and son of my father, my older brother. Um, he started having some physical problems too because he was a big time alcoholic, or drunkard, Bible words drunkard. But it got to the point where God's trying to wake him up. You could have died. Are you going to get saved? Are you going to give your life to Christ? No, 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 no. It just keeps going the way of the world. Threatened his life. So I tried helping him clean up his diet again, seeing as they eat a lot of processed food, but my mother got involved and told me I couldn't stay, and my father said nothing, so I got my own apartment in Montreal. Uh, another good example of the Bible where it talks about how man will fall into the trap, if this man isn't saved, but it goes with the lost world too, that you fall in the trap of pleasing your wife over doing what's right. But in the Bible it talks about pleasing your wife over pleasing God. Okay. There's a lot of lost people out there that they'll say, well, I believe in God and I love God, but they go the way of the world. And there's some of them that will fall into the trap of pleasing their wife over pleasing God. And women can fall in the same trap, pleasing your husband over pleasing God too. My sister at this time became my mother's latest victim and decided to move in with me. I I stayed a year in Montreal and left again for Ottawa because I couldn't stand to watch my father be abused by me, by me mother anymore. And I felt it was best to distance myself from them. I moved back to Ottawa on January 2020th. Started working my first job at 22 and then COVID hit and I lost my job. I started to get angry and drink again. Beer, not hard since I made a vow not to touch spirits after the pregnancy. But it got worse and worse as more restrictions came and I awoke to the reality of our world. I started looking into Freemasonry, global elites, and the people in power. Why is this happening, Lord? Why is the world the way it is? Okay. Remember the other email I got? I, I take it back. I did get that email. We did a letter on, uh, we did a, a video on that letter I got from Great Britain. They just simply typed in, is God real? Something along those lines. Is God real? And God led him to Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries, and that person got saved. That brother in Christ got saved. There's still people getting saved today. So he's curious. And I awoke to the reality of our world. I'm sorry. I started looking to Freemasonry, global elites, and the people in power. I realized how stupid the COVID narrative was and openly rebuked it in public. 
I got called a conspiracy theorist. I was thrown out of stores and my parents called me lit crazy. Last April I ran away to the woods with my two dogs and my sister and the Lord wouldn't have it so he made me come back. When I came back I had no hope and started drinking all day and not caring about my health. Remember the Bible says, talks about our lost state before we were saved, we were without hope and without Christ in the world. When you're lost, you have no hope. One of the things we try to push when we preach the plan of salvation is, is hope. After at our soul, we have an eternal soul, brothers and sisters of Christ, and where are you going to go for all eternity? Most of them believe there's nothing after this life. They have no hope. Until I came across a video about a man named Altian Childs, which I haven't looked into, who exposed Freemasonry. Watching, I was thinking, oh, I know all this, until I saw how bad these Freemasons hate Jesus Christ. I repented that I cast him off as fake because of the Catholic doctrine and immediately went online to read the KJV and found myself crying for repentance because I knew that I was reading what I was reading made more sense than anything I've ever been told in my life. Perfect written word of God. Oh, we can't understand it. We can't. It's just so archaic. Here's a lost man reading it and finding truth that he couldn't find anywhere else in the world. This led me to Brian Denlinger, who helped me work on my faith. But I had a falling out with his community as they attacked me for calling out something he backslid on. And I don't know about that, but people can be harsh in the comment sections. Today, it just seems like it's hard to correct a brother in Christ without getting backlashed. Okay, you get a lot of backlash. But I don't know if you were right. I don't know if this brother was wrong. Okay, it just, just a warning that in the comment section, you have to be careful. There's a lot of lost people in the comment section posing as Christians. Even under King James Video Ministries, Brother Brian, myself, Brother JT, when he was doing videos, there's a lot of false converts that like to troll those channels and like to pretend they're one of us. They're a Bible-believing Christian, and they're there to cause trouble. Okay? But, um, once again, the Bible has specific, the reason I took down my, those two videos, people got on to me, oh, you backpedaled. I still believe in those teachings. I, didn't t I, st I still have those teachings up already. Go look at my liberty issue studies. Okay, I still believe in those teachings. I took it down because I failed the Lord. I had a brother in Christ correct me. It's not about me being right. It's not about Brother Brian being right. He just came and said, the way you went about it, is that how you're supposed to treat an elder in the church? Is that how you're supposed to treat a brother in Christ? Did you go about it the right way? So I had to take the videos down and I had to apologize. I might redo the studies someday because I still believe in those studies because the Bible backs them up. But the way I went about it was wrong. Okay? There's nothing wrong with taking correction from brethren. That's a good thing. Okay? But my warning is, is be careful with people in the comment section. You have false converts and then you have people what I call the cheerleading squad. You have people that are respecter of persons. The guy that I'm following, he can't do no wrong. And you, you come across those people. Okay, you got to be careful. If you believe someone's wrong, email them. If you believe Brother Brian's wrong with something, just write him a letter. That's why he's got his email or his uh, address for the ministry, P.O. Box. Write him a nice letter. Be respectful. Do it with love. Use scripture. When you if you want to correct me, email me. I got a P.O. Box. Do it with love. Do it with, you know, charity. You can be bold with your stand for the Word of God, but do it according to the Word of God. Go to the brother and talk to him yourself, one-on-one. -on -one. And I've been growing in faith ever since. And now I stumble across your videos and find you to be a very devout servant of the Lord. To God be the glory. I'm a wreck when I first got saved. If you've watched my testimony, I was a complete wreck. God had a lot of work to do on me. All the work I do for the Lord, to God be the glory. I only want to surround myself with godly men, and I think you're a very godly man. 
I quit cannabis. Praise the Lord. I stopped video games. I had the same problem with computer games as most brethren. Praise the Lord again. Stopped watching porn and masturbating. Stopped swearing. Cleaned up my diet and I've never been happier. A changed life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things. The changed life after salvation. Remember, he tried to change his life earlier. Didn't work out. Not without Jesus Christ. Doesn't do anything. You look out at this world and you see a lot of these false Christians. Oh, I got a changed life. I got a changed life. It's superficial. They trade one, a day, uh, they trade one sin for another sin. And they just bounce away from all these sins. And then the sins they gave up, they're like, look, I have a changed life. But then they have all these other sins that they traded it out for. You trade out bad addictions for good addictions. And the number one good addiction you're going to have, brothers and sisters of Christ, is your love for this word. Wanting to read this word every day. Bible studies. Okay, just listening to Alexander Scorby read the Bible as you're doing work. Or sitting outside. I sit out here on the deck and talk with the Lord a lot. And I listen to Alexander Scorby a lot. Okay? This is going to be your primary addiction, your primary love. And if this is your primary love, you're not going to have time for junk like video games. You get them out of your life. You're not going to have time for all the other junk. Okay. And I have to say this because I know some people um, never been happier. Um, the biggest sins that I see that the brethren today struggle with, brothers and sisters in Christ struggle with, is... Um, is, uh, how do I say, it? Uh, fornication. Not necessarily that they're actually doing it, but fornication, uh, uh, sexual perversion in any shape or form. Whether it's through Hollywood movies, through video games, satanic style music, porn, through you actually doing it when you're lost, just being flamboyant. God saves you and changes your life. Everyone's always had a tr struggle with that. Another big thing I see coming on is movies, Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games. Those three things. I haven't come across one person, young brother in Christ, I'll say it this way, young brother or sister in Christ, that weren't addicted to those three things when, when they got saved. They were addicted to them, and God had to get them out of their life. And he's never been happier since. God will get that wickedness out of your life, brothers and sisters in Christ, and replace them with good things. God gave me a garden out there to help me get away from stuff. He gave me His Word first, and I love His Word. I go through Bible studies. I listen to other people's Bible studies. Lately, it's just been old Bible studies because some of the brethren are slowing down. And I just pray for them that God will pick them back up and they get back to doing Bible studies. Um, people are falling away, but go back to the old Bible studies. King James Video Ministries of the past to the present. Um, and uh, I've been watching some of uh, Peter Ruckman's question and answers, some Peter Ruckman's audio where he's going through doing expository studies of uh, the Pauline epistles. Um, okay, Bible studies, but he gave me a garden. He gave me chickens. He's blessed me with being able to go out in nature and go for walks. That's a big thing. Nature, you go out and you go for walks, walks on the beach. And anytime I go to town, I try to take a, a, group, a handful of gospel tracts to lay them out and I try to hand out a few gospel tracts. The Lord has blessed me. Right now, the doors are open for that. Okay? He's never happier. When I got saved, what made me miserable as a Christian, newly saved Christian, what truly made me miserable wasn't other Christians correcting me. Although that was like right smack to the face when they corrected me on sin. Yeah, I'm, I'm in sin. Right smack to my face, which is a good thing. Um, but it was when I fought the Lord on getting given up sin. When I allowed that sin that I gave up and got out of my life, when somehow the temptation came through, I let it back in. I became miserable. Okay? When you let God, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy way. When I let God rule fully and completely in my life and get this sin and wickedness out of my life, he brings joy into my life. He brings peace into my life. Great testimony. I went back home two weeks ago to visit my parents and try to save them from their sins. 
I know what he meant. He wasn't trying to save him. He was gonna, he's witnessing to him about the real Jesus Christ. Here's his perfect written word. Let me tell you all about his perfect written word. Let me tell you about the real Jesus Christ. But as soon as I confessed the name of the Lord, my mother went crazy and started to mock the word and insult the Lord. Me, my father, and sister threw her and her drunken friend out that night and she came back the next day when my father was at work with eight police officers that she told I hit her and was against the vaccine. Which she is and I am. Because it's not a vaccine. Mind you, both my parents are vaccinated. And like I said in my comment, it is spiritual. So spiritually that, so spiritually that my father took up draining again two weeks after his shot. So these police were outside waiting for me and the Lord spoke through me and told them they were not to touch me or come near me. I told them she was drunk, but they didn't care, even though she still reeked of wine. So I told them they couldn't touch me or arrest me, but that they had to call an Uber for me to bring me back to Ottawa. And they did. They said, okay, if you're going to leave, you're going to leave. That's good officers in the sense of they're not here to cause trouble. We're going to keep the peace. Okay. They didn't make it crazy. And that was the Lord, though. I believe it was the Lord's hand doing, and so does he, his brother. And they did. I stood outside for 30 minutes rebuking them all of all their transgressions and sins until the car came. The Lord delivered me from that evil, and my father did nothing. He didn't even get mad at her, but through guilt had been supporting me financially. I have no one but my sister who has always stayed by me and supported me no matter what. Brother, you're now part of the body of Christ. You're not alone. It's not just you and your sister. You're part of the body of Christ. Okay. You have brothers and sisters to pray for, and you've got brothers and sisters in Christ that are going to be praying for you. And brothers and sisters in Christ out there, we need to be praying for one another. There are Christians, Jewish Christians, in Israel that we need to be praying for. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But we need to be praying for Christians in t hard situations, in tough areas. Israel, Iran, Iraq, you know, people in heavily strong Muslim countries where this brother is. And Canada, it's just out of control. In America, we kind of forget. I thought we were having it hard here, but the more you look into the news and you look at the junk that's going on out there, they have it a lot harder in a lot of the other countries. Okay, we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Whenever possible, fellowship. Write letters to one another. Skype. We're spread out, so the only way we really can actually see each other face to face and see each other smile and laugh with a brother in Christ or cry with a brother or sister in Christ is Skype. A video conference. The Lord delivered me from my mother and father and every other evil thing I see here in Ottawa. I know this was a long testimony and there are still more details, but this is the meat of my story. Thank you, Brother Philip, for your kind words and your work you do for us. May God bless you all the days, all your days, and stay safe from all this. Glory to God forever. To God be the glory. I still love that old hymn. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Um, great testimony. Brothers and sisters of Christ, even in these tough days, a newly saved Christian, a babe in Christ, my advice to this brother in Christ is to stay in the Word of God. Make sure you're reading. Get yourself a King James Bible and make sure you're reading it every morning and every night. Make sure you're praying. Pray to the Lord all day. Talk to Him with whatever you're doing. When there's tough times out there and everything seems to be falling apart out there, the Bible says, this is Jesus Christ speaking, no man can take him out of my Father's hand and no man can take him out of my hand. I, he says, I and my Father are one. But you're in God's hands. Okay? But who can separate us from the love of God? And it goes and th talks about all this stuff that separates, that the world tries to do to separate us from the love of God. And it even gets to this point of even death. Okay? Brother and sister in Christ, especially that brother in Christ, we need to stay in the Word of God. We need to continue, the Bible talks about, as we're waiting for the catching away of the body of Christ, or until Jesus calls us home, I know there's death, 
So Jesus calls us home death, or the catching away of the body of Christ when he comes. Um, we need to abound. The Bible says you need to abound in the work of the Lord. You need to, what's works of the Lord? Reading this book. Hiding this book in your heart. God's word in your heart. Living it. Prayer. Praying. Constantly praying. Especially with what's going on today. I'm constantly praying. Okay. Leaving gospel tracts places. Uh, hopefully that brother in Christ can get some gospel tracts and between his job he can do work for the Lord by laying out gospel tracts everywhere. And um, the God will watch over you. God will watch over all of us. But we need to be abounding in the work of the Lord even more today. You say, well, you've been coming out with a lot more videos recently than you have in the past. Brother and sister in Christ, I want to stay in fellowship. I want to it just seems like when I put out a video, I get comments, and then they die off. It's like the video just goes dead as far as comments. And more videos, you get more comments. But I'm also trying to put out truth as much as I can because we might not be here. God could call me home at any moment. Could be death. Could be being a martyr. Uh, especially come this winter. But um, He could call us all home any moment. We need to encourage each other to keep standing for the Word of God. Keep standing for absolute truth. Okay? Preaching the plan of salvation. Preaching doctrine. Remember the Bible talks about how those of us that are trying to get out there and preach and teach, we're to labor in the Word and doctrine. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you as a whole need to be laboring in the Word and doctrine. Okay, uh, But we need to stay with the Word. And we need to trust God that no matter how bad it gets out there, People are still getting saved. This brother in Christ. It's a great encouragement to us, brothers and sisters. We think that we hand out gospel tracts and, and it's not really doing anything. People are just tearing them up and throwing them away. And we're doing videos online. There's times where I've done videos online and I started getting to the point where I was like, Lord, am I really doing anything? Am I really helping the body of Christ? You know, people are seem to go quiet. There's brethren that have, I've, I still pray for to this day that have fallen away and I have no clue what happened to them. Um, I pray for brother and sisters in Christ out there. And you get something like this, a testimony, like the letter I got uh, from Great Britain. It's a testimony. It, it warms my heart and I give God glory for it. That, remember it says, abound in the work of the Lord and know that your work is not in vain. In these last days, we're doing the work of the Lord. We're trying to bust butt for the Lord and get to moving and doing work and preaching and teaching and learning and praying and reading our Bibles and leaving gospel tracts places. We continue with sanctification, cleaning up our lives for Jesus Christ and living for Him. And we're trying to abound. And it's not in vain. Even in these last days, it's not in vain, brothers and sisters of Christ. God sees us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we see each other. Iron sharpens iron. So the countenance of one man sharpened the countenance of another. We're here to hold each other accountable to this book to keep people standing. Okay? I want to thank this brother in Christ for the courage to write this testimony because there was a lot in here Okay, uh, that could make him look bad to the world. They'll use it to mock him and everything. And he went through a lot of bad things. Thank you for this testimony, brother, and sister, brother in Christ. And brothers and sisters in Christ out there that have given me testimonies in the past, thank you for your testimonies. So, keep up the good work, brother and sister in Christ. This brother in Christ, make sure you're staying in the Word of God in prayer every day. Get some gospel tracts. Try to hand them out. You've tried witnessing to your parents. Praise the Lord. I tried witnessing to my mom. Didn't want anything to do with it. I'm not even allowed to talk about religion with her. And I've had to, we basically hardly talk anymore because she cut, she starts mentioning movie references and I keep correcting her and saying, I gave up movies. I don't want the temptation. Please stop bringing up movies around me. Right? And we don't have much to talk about. She doesn't want the real Jesus Christ. She professes to be saved. Brother says Christ, we need to witness to everybody around us. We need to give gospel tracts out to everybody that's in our area and we need to lay them everywhere. Okay? We need to leave something behind. Make sure your home is a Bible-believing, God-fearing home so when we leave and they come there, they see godly stuff. There's a lot of stuff there that points them to Jesus Christ in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Hang in there, brother, sister of Christ. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Stay in His Word. I'll see you in the next video.